In this episode, I'm going to take a look at the physical side of training for you and your horse. I'll give you a blueprint for building strength, stamina, and coordination while avoiding falling into the trap of drilling, fatiguing, or boring your horse in the process. So here we go, episode 10. Hi, I'm Karen Rolfe, and welcome to Horse Training in Harmony. This podcast is about you making progress with your horse in a way that you both can love. It's about learning how to move and be in harmony. Because yes, you really can develop a horse to be both athletic and happy. When we show up as our best selves for our horses, our horses will show up for us. So let's get started. I talk a lot about mindset in case you haven't noticed, (laughs) but of course, physical skills are really important and we have to practice them. And the way you practice them will make all the difference. And I talked a lot about that in the last episode, episode nine, the difference of, you know, thinking about what you do, but also thinking about how you do it. But for this episode, I thought I would do my best to focus on really just the process of developing physical skills for you and your horse. So there are some truths, no matter what category of gymnastic exercise you're doing, and for dressage, those categories are flexibility exercises, mobility exercises, or collectability exercises, which develop suppleness, straightness, and carrying power. Or for dressage, as I discussed in the last episode, um, it might be one of the six essential gymnastic abilities, things like riding the difference between circles and corners or releasing into up transitions or riding forward and down transitions or being able to bend with no inside rein or connecting the inside hind to the outside shoulder or riding towards the bend. Whatever (laughs) it is that you're doing, um, there's going to be certain, I said, certain general truths. And that's what I really want to look into um, in this episode. So one of the first things to think about is um, the criteria and the essence. And again, I talked about that in the last episode. Episode nine was a really important episode. And it's what made me think of you know, continuing on and doing this episode. So the criteria is the what the essence is the how, right? So when you're thinking about any physical skill, there's the what is it? And then the sort of why are we doing it, which will dictate how we do it. Like what's the, what's the purpose of it? What's the qualitative things about that exercise that are important? So um, if you don't think about first getting the criteria. Okay. It's recognizable. (laughs) That's sort of stage one. (laughs) You did it. People can identify what you're doing. Um, Then you've got to go to the next stage, which is creating some, you know, being able to have some of the essence showing up, something that says, Oh, that's nice. Right. So, um, and you want to be able to get to the part where you're going, Oh, that's nice. And that is easy. So I talk about um, being able to do a six with ease. And um, th- what that means is like in dressage scoring, you know, you go from zero to 10. And the five, six cutoff is kind of important. So a five is, okay, I recognize what you were doing. You met the criteria. Technically, you did it, but there was nothing to write home about, (laughs) right? So six is the first little tick where you go into like, nice, nothing maybe went majorly wrong. You know, you're not going to maybe, you know, win a big award for it, but it's like, good on you, (laughs) you know? So that, I think that that difference is really important. And a lot of times people work really hard 
and drill and repeat and one more time, do it again, do it again, do it again, do it again. <laughs> and what they're repeating is just trying to get to the five. So what happens is you end up really strengthening the five and everything below the five, you know, just talking about qualitatively. You just, you end up drilling way too much just to try to get it done. And along the process, you're building all the wrong muscles. You're building the, the muscles of incoordination. You're building the muscles of uh, brace or lack of balance or wrestling with each other, trying to get it done. So it's really important to try to get to the six, to get some drops of the essence of it as soon as possible and to make that moment easy full of ease with not so many aids. And I know what you're thinking, you're like, yeah, Karen, that's what we're always trying to do. But I think it's worth saying out loud because so many people, especially in dressage, like I said, they end up spending a lot of time searching for this beautiful moment and inadvertently strengthening. So um, we want to be thinking of, all right, how do we get there? Okay, Karen, sounds like a good idea. How do we get that six with ease? Um, <laughs> we need to have a vision first. We need to um, gather the ingredients necessary. So we have to see what is that exercise we're doing and what are the ingredients I need? Does it require, oh, it requires transitions. Okay, well, I, I better have a trot and a canner before I start trying to transition between them. Oh, it's a shoulder in. Okay, well, I better figure out if I can move my horse's shoulders at all. That sort of thing. The next step, we have the vision. We have the ingredients necessary. Then we start to combine. I think of it like making soup, right? We look at the recipe. Oh, it's vegetable soup. <laughs> Do I have vegetables in the kitchen? <laughs> Do I need to run to the store and go get some vegetables? And then once we know, we know we're creating vegetable soup, and we know we have all the ingredients in the house, now we can start to combine them. So that alone can be a process, right? We might need to go do some homework before we consider actually doing the exercise we're thinking of. So once we start to combine, we want to combine using all of our horsemanship skills and our training skills to try to get to the good stuff as soon as possible to spend as little time searching and as much time enjoying as possible until we get to um, that six with ease. And I also call that moment the first step, best step. So the first sort of layer of developing a physical skill is to try to get to first step, best step. So that, you know, yeah, it's going to take some time. And the reality is it's going to take multiple repetitions to get to first step, best step, but it's a, it's sort of a landmark moment is different than how I train after that moment. All right. So first step, best step means um, you, you know, whatever it is, you're going to do a shoulder in on the long side and you get the shoulder, you get the good step on the first stride. So when you're trying to develop shoulder in many people, don't get a good step, one where you have the criteria and some essence, until maybe 10 trips down 10 different long sides, right? Maybe maybe 10 trips down 10 different long sides in uh, over a year. <laughs> and then finally, after one of those one more times, you get a good step. Um, but it all kind of gets, you know, people, then they stop there. And then they try to start strengthening that. So I'm, I make a real distinction between when I when am I able to get first step, best step, and when am I not? So that already is, is maybe a different way um, to think about it. But when you're trying to create first step, best step, you don't want to drill. You want to really try to avoid the one more time, one more time, one more time. And I know what you're thinking. You're like, it's going to take repetition. So this is why I want to highlight this so much. Yes, it's going to take some time. 
and some multiple steps and attempts to get there, but you've got to do it differently. In the, the moment where you're trying to create first step, best step, that is a time of high curiosity about being really creative to getting into the small details, to looking at the motivation. How can I explain this to the horse? How could I sit differently to make this happen? Wait a minute, I've asked three times and I keep not getting what I want. What do I need to change? This is not a time to just apply the aids stronger and again and again and again. So this is a a moment where I often will tell students to fiddle. (laughs) All you perfectionists are probably going, fiddle? (laughs) What is she talking about? Don't fiddle, be more perfect. No, but that's what I mean about the, the curiosity and the exploring and going, okay, wait, all right, I'm having trouble with shoulder in. Oh, maybe if I turn around, maybe if I do a shoulder in, but facing the other direction, like a counter shoulder in, maybe that'll make a difference. Well, it's not working. Maybe if I just go out in the field, maybe my horse in the field will, maybe they'll be a little bit more motivated. And so then I'll have the energy and I can get the shoulder in. Well, that's not working either, huh? Well, maybe I wonder if I should try it online or maybe I just, let me just try halting in the position. I love halting to create lateral positions when I'm teaching it. But that's the kind of, it should feel like try something, ah, it's not working, try something else. Well, that's not working. Maybe I need to adjust. Maybe, you know, that's the kind of spirit that you want to be in when you're in this mode of combining. Combining the ingredients And the ingredients are, you know, energy, relaxation, the angle of the shoulders, where you're sitting, all of the different things you need, all of the different things you're saying to your horse, you know, make sure that those things work independently. And as you combine, it really should feel like making soup. So, you know, you have the pot and you stir it and then you taste it. Oh, it doesn't, I think it needs more salt. So you go over there and you get the salt, you put the salt in, taste it. I don't know, maybe, maybe a little more pepper. So you go get the, you know what, maybe instead of this pepper, I'm going to put that kind of pepper in there. You grind a little bit and you stir it. That's what it should feel like when you're trying to find first step, best step. And um, the most important part here again, is that you don't get into drill mode, that you stop, you think, All right? So this moment after you have the vision and then you check you have your ingredients and then you combine this 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 moment of combining will take time right so that's for sure Um, but you don't want it to take too long then you're not being creative enough like you want to get some sort of semblance of it happening And you don't want it to take too long. This is, you know, if it's not working, try something else. Try some version of it. And this is also where you want to deconstruct. So, for example, um, canter pirouettes. You know, there's so many ways to do canter pirouettes. And that's, I chose that because it is a very physically demanding exercise. So, in the topic of developing physical skills, you know, that's one that takes a lot of coordination. It takes some strength. And it takes some stamina. Um, And a lot of times people just, you know, spiraling in is one way to do it. They spiral, you get the canner, go on a smaller and smaller and smaller circle, and then back out again as small as you can. And a lot of times what happens when you do that exercise is the horse is just going, whoa, this exercise keeps getting harder and harder and harder. (laughs) And then the horse loses motivation and they're like, oh, I see that exercise coming. It's getting harder. And then you have to put more aids on and whatever. So spiraling in to develop canter pirouettes definitely works. It's a great exercise for some horses sometimes. But you, there's other ways to do it. So my fiddling way, and you know, use have only the pot, most positive connotation of that word or definition of that word. To fiddle to me just means 
you know, be clever. So another way to approach um, a canter pirouette, it's a canter. What are the ingredients? It's a canter. It's a canter that doesn't go very big and it turns. So I have cantering, short strides, and turning. And then I can think, where else do I have some of those ingredients? Well, I have walk pirouettes. Walk pirouettes turn and have short strides. They just don't have canter, but two out of three ain't bad. And there's a principle here that I use a lot in training that's any qualities that you'd like to have at the same time, alternate between them until they naturally combine. I'll say that again. Get, get your notebooks out. <laughs> Any qualities that you want to be enjoying at the same time, alternate between them until they naturally combine. So here's a fiddly way of doing, of starting canter pirouette. I could do walk pirouette and then add a couple strides of canter, transition back to walk and continue my walk pirouette. So I'm doing walk pirouette. Maybe I even straighten canter for two strides. Oops, never mind. Going back to the walk pirouette. If you don't even have good walk pirouettes, maybe walk pirouettes don't help things because sometimes walk pirouettes are challenging. You could do really tiny circle at the walk get that working, right? That alone, getting a good collected walk is a really great way to, um, to, to build canter pirouettes. You could do tiny circle at the walk, two strides of canter, tiny circle at the walk. And you can try seeing if you can canter. And so the right when the horse is going, ah, I can't canter on this circle, you go, That's, it's just two strides. And so they start getting confidence in that small canter and doing those transitions um, helps the horse adjust his canter stride. And then what you can do is when they start building up the confidence to take up the canter there, then they, you're on the small circle or the walk pirouette, they pick up the canter and immediately go out large. So now they're like, ooh, this is going to be hard. This is going to be hard. They pick up the canter and all of a sudden it's out there out on a straight line. So it gets easier as it goes. So I just want to give that example of that's one of, you know, the opposite way to approach that same exercise in a very fiddly way. So I could be walking around mostly, and every now and then I throw a couple canter strides in. Canter stride, canter stride, back to walk. There's going to be plenty for you to develop just doing that exercise. So you know, I'm walking, I'm walking, canter stride, canter stride, walk, 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 canter stride, canter stride. And if I just do that here and there every now and then over a period of time, pretty soon, rather quickly, the horse will develop the canter pirouette. And I never drilled, right? So anyway, one example of how you can take that. So now, um, let's say you, um, you did... You, know, you had the vision. How do you get vision? You can look at videos. You can ask questions. You can watch other people doing it. Sometimes I see students trying to learn and do exercises and they're not really sure how it's supposed to look. Right? So if, you're, if your instructor is giving you an exercise, and you're not really sure how it's supposed to look, like raise your hand. Wait, how's that supposed to go? Educate yourself. Look at videos, things like that. Uh, the ingredients, that takes a little bit of thought. Look at the exercise, see the components, practice them separately. I'm a big proponent of isolating, you know, breaking it down. What are the different ingredients? And take your time to just practice them really independently, you know, of, of the actual exercise that you want to do. Make sure you have them. And then the combining we just talked about. Um, I'll tell a story about when I took my very first uh, Pilates lesson uh, and I did a, a private lesson and I remember going in and, you know, I'm pretty fit, pretty strong, always been pretty athletic. And um, I went in for this private lesson and she put me on one of those tables and then they have the 
little straps you put your arms in. You're supposed to make these circles, right? And so, you know, I'm doing these circles and I'm putting, you know, and I'm thinking I'm doing really good. I'm like, this is too easy, you know, put more weight on. And I'm doing this. And she comes over and she's like, oh, no, no, no. This is way too much for you. And I'm like, this is easy. There's like no weight on this at all. And um, she had me doing these like itty bitty circles with like no weight at all because apparently I couldn't move my arm in this little itty bitty circle without my pelvis doing all this stuff. So what, so she took it all the way down until it was a small movement and I had the control over it. So I could have gone into a Pilates group class and done the exercises, but I wouldn't have been doing my first step, best step. I would have been flailing around doing all the wrong muscles. And in fact, I had done a Pilates class at a gym once, um, just randomly group class. And I used to have some back troubles and I came out of that class crippled because they didn't tell me how I should be doing these roll-ups and things like that. They just like, everybody, you know, do sit-ups for an hour. (laughs) So when I went to the private teacher years later and she really broke it down and we, you know, I'll say we fiddled, right? We didn't like do a workout. She got very specific and and did just little ingredients, do just the right arm, you know, and just the left arm, and then do you see your pelvis? And it was, you know, I left feeling like I didn't work out, like this was not physical at all. And, you know, my brain was like, this isn't what I thought it was going to be. I was going to like work out. But what I realize now is she had a very clear vision. She described the vision to me. No, it wasn't just about doing a bunch of sit-ups in a really hard way. That's not what Pilates is. <laughs> and she took the time to build the ingredients. Later, when I was able to do those easy exercises in a first step, best step way, where she could look over at me and go, all right, pelvis isn't going all over the place. Um, then I could go to the group and we could go to the next stage. So the next stage is where we actually take those best steps, the six with ease. We've met the criteria and now we're going, doing it well. That's nice. We take that and we then build the coordination, the strength, and the stamina. And now we're in a different category of exercise. We're not fiddling and getting creative and deconstructing and breaking apart the ingredients and combining, we're going, we've got it. We can do it with ease. Let's build that. So important. All right. So we have this lovely shoulder in. We can go down the long side and go one, two, three, hiya. And we're in the shoulder in position. Great. Now let's say we want to build our coordination so that we get the first step. And now how do we build our coordination so that every step stays good? We don't get one good step and then wiggle and then one, another good step and then wiggle. So that's, that would be a coordination thing. And so to build coordination, we want to do things slowly, deliberately, consistently, and do multiple repetitions with quality. Now, I know some movements involve maybe speed, right? So there's a, um, you might think, oh, the barrel raise or, you know, do extensions. You can't do those slowly, but you can do the ingredients. You can break, you can still think, you know, like to take the barrel, a barrel horse or a pirouette, you can do it still at the walk. You can do, you can break it down. You can do quarter pirouettes at the canter. You're still doing that movement with ease and quality, but how can you become rhythmic, deliberate, consistent, multiple repetitions with quality, right? So it could be quarter pirouettes on a square at every corner. Why do we do them at every corner? Not to drill. We're doing it at this stage to build the coordination. 
We do it again in the same way, again in the same way, again in the same way. And we stop doing it if we stop losing the essence. If, we, if, it's, if it starts to turn into, okay, we're fighting to keep the criteria, then we need to stop for the moment <laughs> and go do something else, right? So you're trying to build the coordination of the good stuff. To build strength, we want to do things with short repetitions, high effort in short reps. You know, think of how your trainer would do push-ups, right? Give me 10 push-ups, then you take a break. Give me 10 more push-ups, then you take a break. And then that's it. And you don't do it two days in a row, right? So those of you who go to the gym, you do an arm day and then you do a leg day. You don't do arm day, arm day, arm day, arm day, right? So, you know, we, we kind of know some of these things already. Make sure we apply these to the horses. So we don't want to do hard day, hard day, hard day with strength. The thing to know um, with strength is your horse will not get stronger within one session. Strength is something to all of these things are like deposits in the gymnastic bank. And sometimes they feel like you're just putting a dollar in. That's it. Maybe sometimes even just 25 cents. But you just, you put it in. And, and when you're in this stage, it's good to make a plan. Make sure you're balancing out coordination, strength, stamina, and trying to figure out which one your horse needs. Right? Some horses are strong, but uncoordinated. Some horses are strong and coordinated, but they just don't, they can't do it for very long. They don't have the stamina. So try to recognize which of these things is because you, as you're seeing, the strategies are really different for each of these. So strength, short reps, very specific, and you want to do short reps of high quality. So again, if your horse starts to fatigue, you're going to lose the essence. It's going to go from you know, six or higher quality to five or lower. And why would you want to strengthen that? If your horse is fighting with you, don't strengthen that. <laughs> Go get clever and fiddle with something so that you get that six with ease again. Beware of fatigue. There's a certain point where if you keep going, it's not going to get better. It's only going to get worse. And that takes a lot of self-control sometimes to stop when you're doing it. Recognize a, when you're doing a strength move or when your horse is not as strong enough to do what you're expecting to do because they will never get better during the session. In fact, that's one of the clues that the, the, the problem is strength is that they don't improve. They can't improve. They'll only get worse. All right, so stamina being able to sustain things for a long time um, or just sometimes I think of stamina as their aerobic capacity. Sometimes that'll show up. It's like, you, you know, you stop and they're just, they can't catch their breath. So you want to really look at their general fitness. Sometimes it's fun to put a heart monitor on them and kind of see. You can really watch their heart rate and get a um, some good measurements with that. I'm not an expert at that, but I have played with it. And it's been super interesting uh, to know when, when to give my horses breaks during a ride. But think of stamina. You want to be able to sustain things for longer duration. So to build up kind of a base of stamina, I like to think of doing moderate to, moderate to easy things but do them for a longer time and do them in a naturally inspiring area. So my stamina days are out in the field, working trot laps through, you know, around the field. There's a slight up and down, you know, introducing hill work, although that can be a strength exercise, but my, <laughs> I'm in Florida. There's not really a hill. It's a gentle slope. Um, but regardless, out on trails, inspiring areas. So if I'm thinking I want to increase my horse's stamina, I'm not going to go, well, let's do 120 meter circles in the arena today. Because <laughs> right? you're going to bore your horse. Right? You don't want to fatigue them. You don't want to drill them. You don't want to bore them. You want to build them up. So um, yeah, take it down a notch when you're thinking stamina find a more ins naturally inspiring circumstance 
ride with another person, go out on a trail, find a field, don't try to do, you know, pee off for a half an hour, take it down a notch, just do your good working trot, alternate between working and medium trot, even out in the field. And just, you know, that's when you can do some interval training. Uh, the event riders and endurance riders are masters of conditioning. Uh, but just again, think about um, taking it down a notch, make it fun and easy. Okay, so the last thing that I want to bring up on the subject of physically, um, phys physically developing your skills is to think about you and your horse, right? So it's not just our horse, it's not just us, but we're riding and we often have to think about the whole system. So my sort of short advice on this is to sometimes separate it. Sometimes you're really just focusing on the horse. You're like, listen, horse, I'm good enough. We're just going to focus on you. And other days you're going to think, okay, horse, you're good enough. And I'm just going to focus on me. That could be, you know, a lunge lesson. Someone else is lunging the horse. You don't have to talk to the horse about anything. All the horse has to do is go in a circle and you get to really as close to hundred percent as possible. Just focus on your position. The horse is taken care of. Somebody else is, is talking to the horse. And other days, you know, if you're doing something where you're really teaching the horse, you know, you want to make sure your position is good enough and you're not getting in the way. But sometimes we go, all right, when I'm first teaching my horses a complicated maneuver, I'm not going to be able to, you know, think a little tweaks in my position all the time. I'm going to just say, all right, let's, I got to really put my focus and my awareness on my horse. But in the end, the reality is, we have to somehow think about both of us at the same time. The better my position is, the better the horse is going to go. But the, the better my horse goes, the easier it is for me to work on my position and sit better. So definitely a team event. And what I do is I think about bouncing my attention. So I might think about my position drop my stirrups a little bit, do some leg stretches, maybe hold on to the front of the saddle, get my seat warmed up, whatever it is. And then when I feel like, okay, now I'm in a good moment, this feels good, then bounce my attention right back to my horse again. Okay, am I in my sweet spot? What do I need to adjust? Think about my horse. And then I get my horse in a nice moment, my sweet spot where he feels good and I'm in active neutral. I go, good. I'm in active neutral, meaning I don't need a lot of aids for him, for my horse. Great time to bounce to my, my position again. So I'll get my legs down, open my hips, drop my weight into my stirrups, relax my butt cheeks. Good. Check, check, check. Think about my horse. What's the tempo? Is this good? How's the alignment? Yep. Feels good. Okay. Oh, my legs, are they down still? Okay, do a little something. My legs are down. That feels good. Okay, how's my horse? And so bouncing that attention back and forth. And that's one of the beauties of making sure you get to this place of an active neutral where you're not needing a ton of aids to hold your horse together because now you're, a, now you're free to then make little adjustments. And hopefully then you get into this really cool feedback loop where you sit well, so your horse goes better. And when your horse goes better, it's easier to sit. And when it's easier to sit, you sit even better and can be even more sophisticated and nuanced. And then everything is helping everything. And that's what we want to do. So I hope that really helps. Look at me. I did a really good job of, of uh, not jumping back to mindset, right? Well, maybe there's a little bit of that in there. We always take our minds with us. But anyway, I hope that really helps you to think about building your physical skills and building your horse's physical skills, um, making sure you know what you want to do, create the ingredients, combine them to get the six with ease, first step, best step, and then take that beautiful, easy, lovely, nice moment and build the strength, build the stamina, and build the coordination. All right. Well, um, let me know how this goes and we'll see you in the next episode.